Hi, I'm Pastor Matt from the New Life Church in Oshawa. I want to encourage you to visit our YouTube channel and to like our videos and to subscribe. You will surely be blessed by our content, including today's message. Here we go, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I'd love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. Your name on high. Everyone say, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my I'm life. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save I'm us. I'm so glad you came Bring to music. save us.
chapter 5 and verse 6 the words of Jesus they say blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled I want to turn your attention today to the subject entitled drop everything drop everything let us pray 
Lord, we drop everything now to study your word. We drop everything now to focus on Jesus. We drop everything now to have a closer walk with the Savior. Please, Lord, as we hunger and thirst for you, come and fill us, Lord. Fill our cups, Lord. We lift them up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of our souls. Bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. Please bless us now. As we study your word, for we ask it in the mighty name of Jesus, let everyone say, Amen. Every year in Canada around this time, we celebrate something called Thanksgiving. We don't maybe do it quite like our friends south of the border, but we're not too shabby. We're not too shabby. A few years ago, some statistics were gathered about this gobble-gobble holiday. And according to Stats Canada, in 2019, 20.2 million turkeys were sold. 20.2 million turkeys were sold. I bought at least one of them. 76,042 metric tons of pumpkins were purchased for the traditional pumpkin pie, and to go with it, 59.4 million liters of whipped cream were sold. Someone ought to say amen. Thanksgiving is important to us. In fact, holidays in general are important to us. We love the time off work. Would you say amen? We love the time off and the time together with family and friends. And of course, we love the feasting and food and festivities. We love the holidays in my family, in the Feely family. We grew up celebrating the holidays. It was kind of funny because my parents never really talked to each other. And they had a toxic relationship, but they wanted their kids to celebrate the holidays. So... My father would take the grocery list left by my mother and he would go to the store and he would get all the fixings and my mother would do her magic. One holiday, we were gathered at my mother's place and this was later in life and we were gathered there for a holiday feast. Dinner had ended and Christy was clearing the table and cleaning in the kitchen when my sister thought to ask her a question about the roasting pan. You see, my mother was famous for her cooking, like she could throw down, like she knew what she was doing. We were spoiled growing up because she could really cook. She was especially famous for her gravy, which she made from the leftover fat and grizzle in the roasting pan where the turkey was made. So my sister, all of a sudden, wanting to ensure that there was leftover gravy for the leftover turkey, went looking for the roasting pan. And she noticed something right away. She noticed that Christy was cleaning in the kitchen and helping, but she noticed that the pan was clean and the pan was empty. And so she asked Christy the ever-important question, Where are the drippings? And looking a little bewildered, Christy said, what drippings? What are you talking about, drippings? My sister said, in the pan, in in the pan, in the pan, the ones in the pan, the drippings in the pan. And Christy said, it was just some gross stuff left over. So I rinsed it and I poured it down the drain. You talk about the great controversy times (laughs) a million. It was finished. Game over. Close the curtain. My sister came to the other room and told me immediately what had happened. And I stopped and dropped everything and ran to the kitchen to see the scene for myself. And that's what you do when something is really important to you. You drop everything. I dropped the conversation, I dropped what I was doing, I dropped that moment in the living room and I ran to the kitchen. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And when I saw the roasting pan, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. We laughed about it and maybe we even cried about it. And that's why we've told this story over and over again through the years. 
And that's why I'm telling you this story today. With Christy's permission, of course. She wasn't doing anything bad. She was helping to clean. But she'll never live down that story. (laughs) Nothing was more important to us at that moment than that roasting pan. The gravy was greater to us than anything else. You know, Jesus says that when our experience of seeking for righteousness has the same intensity as that, we will benefit by being filled. Blessed, happy, happy if you're hungry, happy if you're thirsty for righteousness, for you will be filled. We learned about the first beatitude. It's a state of heart. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The second one is a state of mourning. Blessed are they that mourn. The third is a state of humility or meekness. Blessed are the meek. But today's beatitude prompts us to action. It's not a state of being. It's a state of doing. It's a quest. It's a pursuit. A longing. A longing for something greater. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Has anyone ever been really, really hungry before? Just raise your hand because everybody's been really, really hungry before. If you're not raising your hand, you're being disobedient, but that's okay. Have you ever been truly, truly thirsty before? I think we all have been thirsty before. And God uses those experiences to teach us something about our experience with him. What happens at those times of hunger and thirst? Do we carry on as if everything is normal and nothing is wrong and we're not distracted? No. Usually when you're desperately hungry or thirsty, You do what you have to do to get some food or some drink. You drop everything. Nothing is more important. Hunger and thirst are powerful human sensations. So powerful that if you're hungry and thirsty enough, you become totally absorbed with the desire to meet that need. That's why we walk around with our water bottles or we have fountains in the church in public places. That's why we have drinks like Gatorade and Powerade that are specifically designed to quench our thirst. We quench thirst because thirst is not a pleasant experience, but thirst is a needed experience. You see, not every experience is pleasant in life, but Some experiences, even the unpleasant ones, are needed in life. If we were never thirsty, we may never know that our bodies needed to be hydrated. If we were never thirsty or hungry, we might actually die. So that sensation of desperation helps us to get what we need. The hunger pains help. Notice I said hunger pains. I didn't say hunger pleasure. Hunger pains. It's not the greatest feeling. Your stomach is paining and you feel like complaining. There is discomfort and growling inside of you like an angry animal. But that's because your body is trying to send you a message and has been trying to send you a message, but you haven't heard the message, so it begins to speak for you. Sometimes life sends you an urgent message. And if you ignore the message, you might be in danger of something tragic. The check engine light is saying something. The bad grades are saying something. The drug abuse and addiction is saying something. The maxed out credit card is saying something. But we have to stop long enough to get the message and drop everything, drop everything, drop everything to respond. That's the normal thing to do, drop everything in a desperate situation. It's profoundly difficult to concentrate on anything when we are thirsty and famished. That's why Dr. Lawrence and I drank 
coconut water out of the coconut in Jamaica because we were thirsty. And he was taking me there to preach the gospel. And on the side, we drank some coconut water and maybe had a little fried fish. It's difficult to concentrate when you're hungry and thirsty. The story is told of the young man who came to Socrates and told him that he wanted knowledge. He said to Socrates, I need knowledge, give me knowledge. And the philosopher said, follow me. And he led him to the edge of the ocean and led him into the water. And without warning, Socrates grabbed the young man and submersed him into the water and held him under the water. And he was struggling, and he continued to struggle until he stopped. Then he dragged the boy to the shore and left him there. And he returned to the marketplace And when the boy recovered, he sought out the teacher, and he said to Socrates, why did you do what you did? And Socrates said, when you were under the water, what did you want more than anything? And the boy said, I wanted oxygen. And Socrates responded, when you crave knowledge like you crave that oxygen, then you won't need me or anyone else to guide you. Hungering and thirsting for righteousness means craving the things of God more than anything else. Not just something we do on a checklist every Sabbath, but something we crave and we long for. And it doesn't mean being religious in the common sense of the word. It means wanting more of God and only God in your life. Most of the messages we receive from popular culture encourage us to focus on ourselves, to satisfy our deepest longings in the way that we can with whatever product is being pushed. So we shop till we drop. We accumulate stuff. We acquire more and more and more because they say he who dies with the most toys wins. But God says, put me first. Seek my kingdom first, and your needs will be met. That's the ironic thing. We go chasing after the things of life, and we miss out on the king of life. But if we would seek the king of life, we would have all the things of life. A few months ago, I preached about the woman at the well and shared some thoughts on thirst. And since I covered that somewhat and seeing how it's Thanksgiving... I'd like to take some time to focus on hunger. Now, you could argue that hunger and thirst are different and that one is more powerful than the other. The beautiful thing about this beatitude is that it covers both experiences. There's no debate about which is greater in this beatitude. Both are important. Both speak volumes. Both are being referenced by Jesus. But interestingly, though, Water and food are not always equally available, especially in our part of the world. Typically, you can get water by turning on the tap, right? Now, some of us may not want tap water, right? But you better believe that we would drink tap water if that's all we had. We might drink tap water and drink from anything if that's all we had. I was helping my sister move once. And it was a scorching summer day. And it was only the two of us. And we had to load up a U-Haul and unload a U-Haul and go up some stairs and come down some stairs. And we were desperately thirsty. Both of us looked at each other and said, do you have any water? We were struggling. We were suffering. Like we were in pain. We were so thirsty. And it got so bad that when we got into her apartment, We began ripping through boxes to see if we could find a cup. And we couldn't find a cup. And I'm not even joking. I hope you look at me the same after this. I found a dog bowl, and it was clean. And I sanitized it some more, and I poured some water in that dog bowl, and I drank it down, and I said, look at me how desperate I was for water that I was willing to drink out of a dog bowl. You better believe that if you were thirsty enough, you would do the same. You better believe it. You better believe that if you were desperate enough, you would go to great lengths to do what you needed to do to be saved. 
Now, having said that, I will never drink from a dog bowl again. <laughs> There's usually a difference in our context between food and water because there's no tap for food. That's why we have food banks and not drink banks. Or you can go to the grocery store and you can buy some food and some drink. Aiden has a job now. Give it up for Aiden. Big up Aiden. And he works at a grocery store. And he gets 10% off groceries. Give it up for Aiden. Yes. <laughs> Don't try and get a discount, by the way. He's a, he's a cashier, and we are very proud of him. Aiden, we are proud of you. He has a job based on human need. People needing food and water, buying food and drink. It's part of our everyday experience. God took a daily experience to teach us a lesson that every day you need food and you need drink. You may be like me, unintentionally intermittent fasting until about 1 o'clock. And then I say to myself, because the stomach is growling, it's time to eat some food. I need that food, and I eat that food, and I seek that food, and I drink that water, and I drink it down, whether it's a water bottle or tap water or a dog bowl, I drink it down because I need it, and I'm desperate for it. It's part of our everyday experience. We hunger and we thirst. Sometimes, however, we can mistake in our hunger for thirst. Did you know that? We can eat more then we would usually eat because what we need to do is just drink a glass of water. So meanwhile, we think we're hungry, but we're really thirsty. We can also eat the wrong things. Junk food, junk food. Turn to your neighbor and say, junk food. Because we all love a little junk food. Junk food is food that contains high levels of fats, salt, or sugar, and it lacks nutrients such as fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Do you know that the food companies, they actually hire chemists to find the sweet spot between sweet and salty and savory and whatnot, to find exactly what you need to, to get from the food exactly what you want and to get that perfect flavor. They hire chemists so that you will buy their food. Eating junk food and having sweet drinks can lead to short and long-term health complications, including weight gain, diabetes, and heart problems. And there's a lot of junk that we consume in life, and I'm not just talking about food. There's a lot of junk. And sometimes the junk takes the place of what we really need, which is God. We each have a God-shaped vacuum in our soul that only God can fill. And when we try to fill it with other things, there are short-term and long-term complications. So if you want to avoid junk food, don't raise your hand. They say that you can do the following. Eat regular meals, regular meals, so you don't get too hungry. So maybe, you know, taper off the intermittent fasting at 10 o'clock in the morning instead of 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Drink water first and eliminate sugar-sweetened beverages. Consume snacks that are nutritious and low in calories. Understand your stressors because we all have them. Take time to notice the emotional triggers that can set you up to crave junk foods. You know that the word desserts is the word stress backwards? You better check yourself. Number five, get plenty of sleep. We talk about diet. We talk about lifting weights. We talk about cardio. We talk about treadmill. We talk about all kinds of things. But what about your sleep? Get plenty of sleep. When researchers let people sleep only for hours, a few hours a night for five days, those people ate more and they gained more weights. Eating, eating and watching what you eat and getting proper sleep can help you to lose weight. Lastly, realize the downside of marketing. Marketing is helpful, and marketing introduces us to a variety of products, but we have to remember that it's a business, and we are the customer and consumer. 
This is how you can deal with the junk and funk of life. But I've also noticed that sometimes we don't even realize that we are hungry. I love my children. I love my children. It's Thanksgiving. So I'm going to say it again. I thank God for my children. I thank God for Aaliyah and for Aiden. I thank God for them. They bring me joy on a whole other level. And they give me a lot of sermon material, so give it up for Aiden and Aaliyah. <laughs> Aaliyah is an example of that. I've noticed, without maybe her realizing, that a lot of times she'll say she's not hungry. And I sit there, and I know that the last time she ate was like eight hours ago. And she doesn't realize she's hungry until something appetizing is in front of her. Then all of a sudden, her hunger is awakened. It's fascinating. On a spiritual level, the same thing can happen to us. We may not recognize our hunger for the Word until the Word is within us, until the Word is in front of us. I went to my first Seventh-day Adventist church service, a week of prayer for young people, because Christy's mom was telling me, I need you to come to this. I expect you to come to this because you're dating my daughter. I want you to come to this. So as a good, respectable young man, I went to the church service, and I sat in the front row, and my arm was on Christy's shoulder, and I was slouched down like Slim Shady in Scarborough in the front pew. And there I was, listening to the sermon. And by the middle of the sermon, I was sitting up, and my arm was off her shoulder. <laughs> and I was hearing the Word of God. Something was happening inside of me that I couldn't even explain. So I was there the next night, and the next night. And by Sabbath, I was in the pool, giving my life to the Lord. The Word of God stirred up something in my soul. We may not recognize our hunger for the Word until the Word is within us, but we have to take time to taste the Word and feast on the Word. Psalm 34 and verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Don't you believe that the Lord is good? Hasn't He been good to you? Haven't you tasted of His goodness? Haven't you seen what He can do for you? Haven't you seen the answers to prayer and the bills that have been paid and the deliverance in your life? Haven't you seen God's goodness? When you get a taste of God, you want more, but you first have to take a taste of God. Sometimes you have to be intentional about your spiritual food. People who lift weights and build muscle have to intentionally consume enough protein to repair their muscles. Professional athletes usually have a very strict meal plan that gives them the maximum output for competition. What if we had a spiritual meal plan? What if we had morning worship and maybe even evening worship? I grew up in a church that didn't really talk about those things. And when I came into the Adventist church, I heard about daily devotions and morning worship and evening worship. I thought, do you go to church in the morning? Do you go to church in the evening? No, you get to the family altar in the morning and you get to the family altar in the evening and you pray and you study the Word. What would our spiritual muscles look like? What are, would our families look like? What would life look like? Maybe it wouldn't be perfect, but maybe we would be less hungry. Maybe we would be less thirsty. Maybe we wouldn't be chasing some of the things of this life. Maybe we would be filled. So ask yourself the question today. You don't have to raise your hand. Are you full today? Are you satisfied in life today? Is your thirst quenched today? Are you content? It means that you're happy with what you have and where you are because God is with you. And you accept what he has given you and you trust that he will give you more. God's promise is to take care of us, to provide for all of our needs as we put him first and as we seek his righteousness. Righteousness, in simplest terms, the simple definition is right doing. Righteousness, right doing, or right conduct, or conformity to God's will. But I'd like to suggest 
that the context of this passage demands a righteousness that is more than just right doing or right conduct or conformity to God's will. In the same Sermon of the, on the Mount, after the Beatitudes are finished, Jesus says in Matthew 5 and verse 20, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. The key word is exceeds, except unless your righteousness exceeds. It doesn't say unless your righteousness excludes their righteousness, which means that Jesus is saying it should include the traditional understanding of right doing and right conduct and conformity to God's will. But it's not just right behavior. That's legalism. It's right believing. The word for righteousness, dikaiosine, can be translated deliverance or salvation, even victory, referring to God taking what is wrong in your life and making it right. The focus is not what we do, but what God does in us. The focus is the action of God and his intervention on our behalf. Your part is to seek God. His part is to save. And to illustrate this, Jesus makes reference to hungering and thirsting for righteousness, just like you're going to be hungry for that Thanksgiving dinner, just like you're going to be hungry for Sabbath lunch. He gives us this illustration to help us remember that just as we seek for food and drink, we need to seek for his kingdom. God is the chef, but you got to show up at his restaurants. You don't have to cook, praise God, but you have to sit at the dinner table and eat the food. Even Jesus depended on his Father for spiritual sustenance. John 4 and verse 34, he said, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me. Jesus gives us an example. My food is God. My bread and water are Jesus. My oil is the Holy Spirit. My supper is God's grace and mercy. My dessert is God's favor. Job 23 and verse 12 says, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. The words of God's mouth more than my necessary food. So before you have your Rice Krispies in the morning, God is saying, do you treasure my word? Do you feast on a verse? Do you take time in the scripture? And that's why the psalmist said in Psalm 42, verses 1 to 2, as a deer thirsts for streams of water, so I thirst for you, God. I thirst for the living God. When can I go to meet with him? What a time of year, Thanksgiving. The leaves are changing. It's not winter. It's a little break from the summer. It's a time that's beautiful. It's a time of gratitude. A time of celebration. A time of dinner roast and turkey. I thought someone might say amen. Someone gave me a jerk turkey not too long ago. It was, praise God for that. It was good. A time of all the fixings and all the family and all the celebration, time of worship together. We're here in the house of God, worshiping together. Time of friends, time of fellowship. So this weekend, when you start to smell the food or you sit down for some quiet time and you, you have a meal by yourself or you have a meal with your family, when, when, when you feel that craving for something sweet, something nice, maybe some pumpkin pie, ice cream, whatever it is, be reminded that you can also taste and see that the Lord is good. That if we would just be still and know God, the experiences of life, the light in the morning and the sunset in the evening and the food and the drink, 
the bread of life and the living water is a reminder that we need God, that we crave for God, that we hunger for God, and every day he waits to meet with us. Now, I don't know about you, but I've always had a healthy appetite. I mean, I can eat. And at this age, I have to tell myself to go about 60%, 80%. I have no problem making sure there's no leftovers or eating the leftovers if there is leftovers. And usually after a holiday meal, I am full to capacity, like I am busting. I'm so full that I don't want anything else. I've had too much. Jesus said that if we would hunger and thirst, not for the things of the world, but for his righteousness, we would be busting. We would be full. It actually means we would be fattened and stuffed and totally satisfied. Jesus is saying if we would hunger and thirst for righteousness, spiritually speaking, we would have to undo our buckles and sit back and just not move until we recover it. God promises to fill our lives with good things so that it's overflowing. I've wanted many things in my life. In my troubled times, I've been hungry and thirsty for many things. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things which could not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from this well which never shall run dry. Do you want to draw from that well today? To feast on God's word and be satisfied, be content, and be happy and be filled. Each one of us has to take time to seek him. It's a personal thing. Matthew 7 and verse 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Jeremiah 29, 12 to 14 says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Here's the promise for you today. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your hearts. I will be found by you, says the Lord. Who believes God's word today? Who believes God's word today? Who believes God's word today? Adrian and his team are going to lead us now to another time of worship. And I'm encouraging you this Thanksgiving to be grateful. You may want to write a card and put it on the board. You may want to text somebody that you appreciate and let them know, thank you for being in my life. You may want to take time to really reflect on what God has done for you. But you may want to also at this stage in your experience seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him and trust in him and turn to him. Maybe even to give your life to him. God is able to fill it. You might feel empty today, kind of empty and used and abused and just left to fail and to struggle. But did you know that you are an earthen vessel in the hand of God? And that even with your cracks and your chips and your brokenness, that God is able to pick you up and fill your cup and bless your life? And work through you to overflow, to be filled and overflow, to bless others. God promises to be found by you so you can seek him today. And if you'd like to seek him today for something you need, or even just to say, I'm grateful, God. Because I'm grateful for my wife, and I'm grateful for my children, and I'm grateful for my church. I'm grateful for what he's doing in this season. And if you're grateful, or if you need God just to fill your life in a way that only he can do, and you have a prayer on your heart today, while this team here, our worship team, 
is leading us, I'd invite you to come forward. I'm going to pray with you and pray for you today. I invite you to come if you have a prayer on your heart. you know that if you would like to respond to today's message, let us know how we can serve you and help you in your journey as you seek for righteousness. Please fill out a connection card, and we have connection cards in the pews. You can drop it in the drop box. You can drop it in the offering plate. We will follow up with you. We will certainly pray for you. Uh, we're praying as a team, and this wall represents our prayers and our prayer ministry. God has a plan for your life. You're here today, you're watching online, it means that something is happening and God is orchestrating the next steps for you to take. But I encourage you to take those steps and to move forward in his plan and to hunger and thirst for the greatest thing you could ever have, which is Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you give us that hunger and that thirst. We don't always enjoy it. It's uncomfortable. It's distracting. But God, please continue to distract us until we reach out for the right attraction. Until we reach out for Jesus, God, we pray that you would continue to work on our hearts and knock on the door of our hearts and help us to be filled, God, filled with purpose and filled with truth and filled with your word and filled with love and the fruits of the Spirit. God, fill us as only you can. Stuff us, God. 
May we be at capacity spiritually, God. And if we're only 5 or 10% today, we pray that you bring us to the next level. God, thank you that we could be here to worship for the beautiful experience in worship today. For those who have come forward, those watching online, they have needs. Maybe they're just saying that they're grateful today, God. We pray that you would bless their life experience so that they would have more things to be grateful for and that they would be filled. For those coming forward because they're seeking for you, they're feeling empty or discouraged, God. They have a problem in their life, God. Please be the answer to their problem. Please fix their situation. Please save them. For you are the Lord that saves. You are the Lord that provides. You are the Lord that protects. You are the Lord of hosts, the King of kings. And we pray, dear God, that you would work on their behalf as only you can, God. As only you can, God. May we be blessed this Thanksgiving and be happy this Thanksgiving and be grateful this Thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for what you've done and for what you're doing and for what you plan to do. We give ourselves to you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let everyone say amen. Amen. You may return to your seat. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. Because you got a lion in. Thanks for tuning in for that message. I pray it was a blessing to you. You know, at New Life, we exist to love God and to love people. We believe in serving the Oshawa community and surrounding communities, and we believe in serving you. If there's ever a time where you want to give back and support our ministry, we would encourage you to give in three ways. You can visit our website, 
and you can look at the Giving tab. You can give through Interact Transfer, e-transfer, and you can also mail us a check. Most of all, we want to encourage you to be blessed by our contents, to subscribe to our channel, and to like our videos as we continue to share with you the Word of God. Until next time, God bless.